there. I'm happy to say we can cross live to Sydney and the director of the Centre for Counter Hegemonic Studies, Tim Anderson. Tim, pleasure to have you on the programme uh, today. As you see it, is there a tangible positive outcome of Nancy Pelosi's trip? And if there isn't, what's the purpose? Why go to so much friction? And the reaction from Beijing says it all, I think. But is there an upside? The upside, if there is one, is that it's bringing out into the open the desire of Washington. I, I think it's quite wrong to try and distinguish Pelosi from the rest. She's number three in the US government, after all, um, that Washington wants a conflict with, with China. It's very transparently a provocation. And effectively, they're giving China a free hand to respond because it said it's going to respond in any way it sees fit. And that could be a limited response or it could be a very serious response. And of course, Washington is already saying, um, oh, China may, may turn this into a crisis. In other words, they'll say that this is China's war. Uh, as, as they said, Ukraine was Russia's war. They'll, they'll try it, but uh, it, it's very transparent. She is going in there with a military escort. There are a number of large warships going with her. This is not a proxy army. This is the US military um, following the number three in the US government into Chinese territory. If you go back to the 1970s, that was when America recognised uh, Beijing as China, moving away from their recognition really as, as tai, of Taiwan, of Taipei. Uh, but Beijing now claims that the US has been slowly chipping away at what that is. It's called the One China policy. How fair, Tim, is that assessment? <laughs> Well, th there's a reconstruction of what they're calling Taiwan these days. I noticed today that Google has put out false information suggesting that Taiwan is a separate country and was created more than 100 years ago. Uh, no such thing. Um, and the US does not to this day recognise Taiwan as a separate country. For a number of years, it recognised it as the representative of all of China. The Taiwan constitution still includes delegates from Mongolia and from Tibet, for example. It pretended to represent all of China. So, uh, but the illusion is being put out there that this is some sort of independent country and they're going to um, assure its independence from China. This is a very, very dangerous scenario. I was just looking through some of the American press earlier, Tim, and I want to stress this is mainly from democratic leaning press. Some of the issues brought up was Pelosi in the spotlight over her husband's financial dealings. The Biden administration's ratings are falling. Uh, Americans are increasingly unhappy uh, with the economic situation there. Is it beyond the realms of possibility? Is it cynical to see this as a stunt designed to divert attention from those massive domestic problems in your eyes? It's certainly a stunt. It's a provocation. Whether diverting from those matters is the main purpose is another story. We've known for some time that the US has been ramping up this um, uh, confrontation, extreme jealousy with China. Um, it, it's been pushing in this direction. Um, is the timing of it influenced by those particular um, downsides? It's not clear. Uh, Washington says it will not be dictated to by Beijing and that is the Chinese government which is acting uh, aggressively. Is there anything to back up those accusations when w we look at the facts? You've got the uh, Pelosi trip in the region, you know, tens of miles away from the Chinese mainland. It's their backyard, essentially. Um, when you hear something like that, do you... Do you, do, you be, do you belittle what uh, Washington is trying to say here and, and act as if, well, what kind of accusations are they? I mean, the problem is that Washington is in the habit of doing what mm. it sees fit and not applying the standards of the world to itself. It's not just China's backyard, it's China. It's territorially China. There are a handful of small countries that recognize Taiwan as a separate country. The USA itself does not. This is an incursion, a military incursion into China. And that's why the Chinese are taking it very seriously. Uh, I've seen the Pelosi trip called power without responsibility, essentially a glorified uh, photo opportunity to say we stand with you, but thinking little of the potential ramification that this could cause not just in the region, but across the world. Is, is that something that chimes with you? 
I'm afraid I see it as uh, quite premeditated. I think it is a provocation which is intended to get some sort of response, which they will try and blame on the Chinese government there. And the Chinese government has already committed itself to some sort of response because it is an unacceptable incursion. Imagine if Chinese military went into Puerto Rico or some other part of US territories. Um, it's unacceptable and I, I, I can't see that, I can't see that any good is going to come of it. Possibly, you're very good with your time, by the way. Po another possible issue I'd like just to raise with you is uh, the financial side of things. Taiwan is important to America because of computer chips, uh, a lot of computer chips, um, that 21st century commodity, that vital one, is sent to the US. Is there a sense that they want to protect that? They're trying to get their uh, IT industry as regards uh, generating and manufacturing computer chips in the US off the ground, but it takes many billions. It takes a lot of uh, intellect to, to do that. Uh, so in, in this case, is money at stake? It, it, the financial issue, is that one too that is important here? I mean, uh, in the big picture, money is at stake, but I don't think that particular issue is determinative for this reason, that the economic relationship between China itself, the People's Republic, and the USA was a very, very strong one. <clears throat> and a lot of those um, relationships have been damaged in recent years, um, particularly beginning with the Trump administration, but now great continuity with the Biden administration. A lot of that economic relationship, which kept um, the Chinese-US relationship on a relatively even keel for quite a long time, although albeit China was winning in that relationship. Um, but the US is prepared to sacrifice that because it's so jealous of the role that China is playing in the world. Now it knows that China is going to displace it in economic terms and strategically uh, the, the, the ventures that the US is making in West Asia, in the Middle East, in Central Asia, in between uh, Asia and Europe are driving these growing coalitions, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the BRICS. They're growing in size, they're growing in popularity because there's such a strong international reaction to what the US has been doing in recent times. And Tim, just to um, touch on a point you made earlier, that supposed division between um, what is being said here. You have Joe Biden saying that the uh, US military does not think it's a great idea or a great timing for Nancy Pelosi to be going to Taiwan. I is that real division or do you think this was played out beforehand, premeditated in a way? Yes, I believe it's premeditated. They would have consulted about this. They would have um, probably proposed it to Pelosi herself. Um, she's number three in the in the US government, as I said. This is something that they've been planning for some time and the timing of it may be influenced by more particular events, but they've been planning to initiate a confrontation with China in the way that they planned for many years to initiate the confrontation with Russia in Ukraine. A recent article in the Wall Street Journal stated that the West has been trying to bring China into the coalition of the civilized for a half century. Quite interesting language. Do you think that that attitude, really superiority of the West, is one of the causes of tensions with nations, including, of course, China? Uh, yes, of course it is. And, and most of the post-colonial world, um, particularly Africa, you see the recent tour of Sergei Lavrov in Africa and uh, those other countries are very aware of this. They're very aware of colonial language. They're very aware of this type of uh, racialism that's used by um, supposedly superior powers. The US has pretended it's different to the Europeans, but it's presenting itself as very similar to old style European colonialism. And it's, it'll be seen for what it is. Tim, thanks for your time and your thoughts today. Much appreciated. Tim Anderson, director of the Center for Counter Hegemonic Studies, live from Sydney, Australia.